In the last lecture, we looked at the challenges of detecting very low level signals in the presence of noise on the ground. At the end of the lecture, we identified a product, as we called device X, which had good common mode rejection and could deal with problems where there was noisy grounds or there was a lot of stray signals flowing into the ground connections and circuit boards. And we call this plan B. What we want to do instead of having ground referred signals is we will use the different signals from the transducer and detect the different signal and amplify that and ignore any variation of a common mode signal with respect to ground. Here's component X and in this instance here we don't care how much the common mode signal varies because we are only going to amplify the differential signal. The common mode signal has a, a, has a large gain so that the output is significant so there's no more problems with small signals um, um, flowing in the ground connection. Because it has high common mode rejection, it doesn't care what the ground potential is, which means that it, it can reject any noise. And the third thing is it has an explicit terminal connected to it, which um, the output ground is referred to. So we can be sure that the signal at the output of this node is exactly what we want. And we call this, this component an instrumentation amplifier. So let's look a little at um, a perfect instrumentation amplifier. So the first thing is it ha usually has finite gain, often 100, 200, 1000 times. And it's set, and th this gain is set very accurately on the instrumentation amplifier by um, resistors built into it. It is purely differential gain. In other words, the output voltage is very close to just a function of the voltages appearing at the two inputs. And ideally, this gain is zero for common mode signals. The reference signal is usually referred to ground, although it does not need to be. You can refer it to other points in the circuit as well, perhaps a bias rail. And the sense signal is usually connected to the output in a conventional feedback fa um, fashion. The output or the difference between the output to the reference is a differential voltage gain of the difference of the voltages between N plus and N minus, and also a component due to the common mode voltage gain. But if we have a perfect instrumentation amplifier, ideally the common mode voltage gain would be zero. So let's look at an application for an instrumentation amplifier. And here we have a thermocouple, which is, an, uh, which is um, dissimilar metals, and the difference in voltage represents the temperature of those metals. And we have it connected here. Um, we have the output here connected to a uh, coaxial cable and the symbol that's on the diagram there is the international symbol for a coaxial connection onto an amplifier. And here we have a typical coaxial cable that would take the signal from the, different, the instrumentation amplifier to perhaps um, a, a digital processing unit to further process the signal. We've already been very careful and twisted the two wires together um, of the thermocouple to avoid any magnetic pickup or any electrical pickup that may happen on the, the route from the thermocouple until the inputs of the differential amplifier. We've connected the reference um, to, um, to the ground and also to the output connector. So the voltage between the inner and the outer of the, of the coax cable is the true output of this amplifier. And in this instance here, we've used a resistor, which is a large value resistor, just to supply or bleed away any bias currents that's required by the, the, uh, by the amplifier. 
um, because a thermocouple has got very low um, resistance through the, the wiring, um, the single amp resistor will actually provide the bias current for both inputs. And the design of the circuit here is pretty much immune to any voltage appearing on the ground signal. So it's only going to amplify the difference voltage. Now we can improve this slightly by actually making the um, improving the symmetry here. And here we've actually incorporated two resistors um, to supply the bias currents to each, which means that from a thermocouple, a um, transducer standpoint, the input at both N plus and N minus looks identical from an electrical standpoint. And it has a relatively high resistance to the ground, which is what we want. Um, if we were actually practically uh, designing this, we would actually incorporate a, um, um, a low pass filter because temperature is not going to move very quickly. And that will actually filter out any of the um, noise that you may pick up from RF or from magnetic influences um, around the, the wiring. Um, and that's what you would see in a real implementation of an instrumentation amplifier um, for practical use. I have uploaded some examples of that with particular emphasis on audio amplification, where you can see the low pass filter designed to reject any of the RF noise um, at the inputs. Let's have a little look about um, common mode rejection and how this is defined in a instrumentation amplifier. So first of all, we have the, the, the output, which is um, referred to the reference. And we want it to be a voltage gain, AV, times the difference of the two voltages um, appearing at the inputs, in plus, minus, in minus. And ideally, we would only get an output signal um, in response to that difference. But because um, circuits are never perfect, um, we may have a contribu uh, contribution from the common mode um, voltage that's appearing at the inputs, which is the average voltage at in plus and in minus. Let's look at some of the numbers around our, our, our circuits and, and see what they actually mean. So in the first example here, we've got one volt appearing at both inputs. And because we have a perfect off um, instrumentation amplifier, the output voltage will be zero. In the second example here, we have got one millivolt appearing at the input. So the output will be one millivolt times the differential and gain of the instrumentation amplifier. And finally, we have one volt on one input and one volts plus one millivolt on the other input. And the answer is the same. We would get one millivolt times the gain of the instrumentation amplifier appearing at the output. It would totally reject the signal that's common mode appearing at the input. That's the perfect um, instrumentation amplifier. Unfortunately, because we're dealing with real components and real amplifiers, we can never get a perfect instrumentation amplifier. And a change in the common mode or average voltage at the input will always give rise to a change at the output. Our challenge is to design that change to be as small as possible while maintaining the differential output as, as large as possible. This gives rise to um, the concept of common mode gain, which is the average voltage. And in most instrumentation amplifiers, we would get our differential gain would be much, much larger than our common mode gain. And we define a concept called common mode rejection ratio, which is a division of the differential gain divided by the common mode gain. Let's go back to our um, instrumentation amplifier and look at what happens when we actually have some um, common mode gain and differential gain. So here we've defined the differential gain as 100 times, and we've defined a common mode gain of about 0.3. So calculating that out, we have a common mode rejection ratio of 333 times, which is 50.4 decibels. 
Now let's apply our, our three scenarios. So in the first one here, we have one volt being applied at both of the input signals, and that gives rise to a 300 millivolt signal at the output because our common mode gain is 0.3. So the average input voltage is one volt, multiplied by the gain of the common mode, which is 0.3, so we get 300 millivolts output. Let's look at the situation where we apply one millivolt. When we apply one millivolt to the input and zero on the other one, we land up with um, an amplification of um, very close to 100 millivolts. Now that's the signal we actually want. That's a different signal there. Technically, there should be a small error there because the average is actually half a millivolt. But ignoring that, um, it's going to be very close to 100 millivolts, a purely differential amplifier. But let's look at the, the third scenario where we have one volt on one input and one volt plus one millivolt on the other input. We still have a differential input of one millivolt, but in this instance, we land up with a 400 millivolt output voltage, which equals 100 millivolts from the voltage that we um, detect from the different signal plus 300 millivolts from the common mode rate signal. So we can see that, that the, <clears throat> if we have an input of 333 millivolts on each of the input, we give exactly the same voltage appearing at the output as a differential signal of one millivolt. So with a common mode rejection ratio of 333, the minimum voltage signal we could detect at the output is one millivolt. If the common mode voltage is one volt, as the example we've shown here, the minimum detectable signal at the output is three millivolts. So we would have to have, in the presence of a one volt common mode voltage, we would have to have a three millivolt differential voltage. The minimum detectable signal is assumed when the error signal, due to common mode or any other issue, is the same as the real or the wanted signal. Hopefully that now gives you an understanding of how the um, instrumentation amplifier works. In the next lecture, we'll go on to look at how we actually design instrumentation amplifiers.